one's kind of an interesting one. It's a little cabin. Okay, so I get here and they had uh, some guy that usually does whatever in here and he said maybe the motor was bad, but I see a fuse missing out of the control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a jumper with a fuse on it in here because chances are they have a short. Basically we'll put that on there and see if it trips. So we have 24 volts. We've got 240 coming through the breaker. Nothing came on. I got the fan switched on and the thermostat's calling for heat, but nothing's happening. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check and see are we getting any power to the sequencer, which these are old fashioned. You new guys probably don't see these very often, but basically got a little heater element in there. Gets hot and it brings on the heat or fan, depending on what it is that's hooked up to it by a bimetal switch right there. And the very bottom gets hot and just makes a little bimetal go pink and it closes the circuit. Flipped on the power, didn't even hear it click with the, the low voltage breaker tripped. Turn it on, not much is happening, but here in a second it should call and it should, it should trip. But went ahead and unhooked it here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna isolate this thing from the circuit from the thermostat because we've obviously got a short somewhere and unfortunately they got a heat pump hooked onto that so that means we got extra common wires we got wires hooking out to the outside unit all those things can create more issues for a potential short now that we got that there we still got the breaker hooked on to the unit Go ahead and hook up our jumper here between R and G. See whether the fan comes on. Which it does not. There it is. So we don't have a problem with the fan. Now let's see whether or not it shuts off. It's got a time delay. I don't feel like waiting all day for it. So go ahead and flip it back on. Let's go to G. Or de let's go to Y, or geez Louise. All right, let's go to W. Now this may have to have a call for G at the same time. So we will listen to hear whether we hear any clicks. Or we can watch the amp meter here, which I am not seeing any amperage being pulled. G and W both. Let's see if that does anything for us. They've got a uh, heat pump out here and back. I kind of feel as though there's probably a short out here that's causing it. This thing is pretty cool. You can literally hook it right on the two by four there like that. It's got the swing down light and you put that bad boy wherever you want it at and you can turn it down a little bit lower, lower. That's the lowest, which is more than what my little turd here has been doing. But you can see it screws with the lights uh, because it's pulsating it. You can't see it, but the camera can. Okay, so it doesn't do any difference. I've taken all the way up to 240 frames a second. That didn't do no good. We'll leave it there for you guys so we can get the best picture possible. Because that's what I'm all about. Originally, I jumped it out and it worked fine and the fan came on. This time, I have a feeling that breaker may not be doing so good. So, um, but as far as it blowing, it could have been other issues. We'll check to ground for each wire to see if that's got anything to do with it. All right, so since we've got a breaker box right outside, we are going to go ahead and turn it off. We're going to remove the breaker and see how it does without it, and then we will get that later, because otherwise I'm gonna drive all over town looking for a breaker, wasting time just to find out we need other parts, so. This is fused at the breaker box, which is right over there. So it's not like it's gonna hurt anything. Um, it's not even the right breaker to begin with. You got a 40 amp breaker here on 10 gauge wire. So that's not even suitable. Somebody's already got the wrong one in there. Or I should say they ran an undersized wire to the furnace that probably required bigger. Um, this is what happens when you sell to the general public. What do we got here? Heat strips. It's got two strips, so uh, two strips are going to probably be about 45 amps, so they're probably not even got the right size of breaker. Look at that, it's dead. Ain't that terrific. 
Yeah, look at that. It's gotten so hot that the, that the insulation's cracking off of it. That's, that is terrific right there. All right. So that gets us power to the other leg. We're, we're break, uh, got the breaker protecting one leg. Not idea at all, but this is 7KW. So that's probably why they've gotten away with it. 7K, so P over IE, do the math on that. 7,000 watts divided by 240 volts is 29.1 amps. Let's add about six amps for the blower. So you're at 35. So yeah, we're a little bit on the shy side. You're supposed to have 20% over under that, underneath your rate maximum rating. So you're about two amps over. Uh, you're a little shy on the happy spot. So 40 amps minus 20%. Should be pulling the 132, so. All right, so we've got to turn back on. Do we have juice on your caboose? Yes, we do have juice on the caboose. Let's go ahead and get in here without getting shocked. Get that hooked onto there. This is the breaker for the low voltage. Like I said, it was tripped prior to. Do we have a short? Do we have a breaker that was just weak? Okay, so we haven't tripped yet. So we're gonna take our R, we're gonna go to G. See if G comes on. Come on, baby. All right, so we know that that works. Let's go to W. Let's check amperage. There's 31 amps. So the furnace works. Problem is not with the furnace. Our problem is gonna be with our low voltage and the breaker. The breaker just so happens to be one of the issues they had. We just basically went through and narrowed some things down. Now, like I said, technically they're right at the absolute maximum current of what 10 gauge is rated for, which generally is 30. They're right at 31, so they're technically undersized. They should have went to the next size up, which would be an eight gauge, um, which would be somewhere in that uh, 40 amp range. And then six is usually what we would run, which is technically between 50 and 60, depending on what book you're looking at, and whether it's single stranded, copper, aluminum, a dog leg, but I can smell it working. So I know that both strips technically are working right now. So here's one leg of the strips coming in at 14.6. There's the other one coming in at 14.6. So both elements work. So we wanted to make sure we had all of our inventory figured out what we're gonna need when we do this. So let's go ahead and unhook that from the circuitry. We're completely unhooked here. There we go, wow. The elements shut off at the same time as the blower, which means they're not cooling them down completely. What a wonderful job they did designing that. So um, let's go on to the next co-round of things. Let's go ahead and check our thermostat wires and see whether or not we got continuity to ground on any of them. Let's go to common on the transformer. Let's go to G. Look at that. All right, so let's undo this blue wire, which I am not 100% certain what that is. Let's undo it. That way we got our thermostats completely. Oh yeah, that's not what I needed. That means it's starting to get a little deadish. Okay, quit blinking. I ain't got time for you to blink. All right, going back to our common here. So we don't have anything to there, nothing to there. Nothing to hear, and this is how it goes, guys. You'll be down here in the crawl space, and your um, freaking lights decide to go dead. So let me get another battery for that. But it appears that our problem is probably in the thermostat wire somewhere. It could be on the Y terminal, like I said. The outside unit looks like it might have some jackery going on. So let's touch those. Nothing. Let's go to the W circuit here. Got to check that out yet. Nothing on that one either. So we're isolated from that. Let's go grab a battery real quick. This thing's getting upset. 
All right, so while we're finishing testing things out here, we're getting rid of the wires that have been twisted a million times so they don't break off in the wire nut, creating a callback for later. We have unhooked W2. That way only one strip is going to run, which will keep our amperage below the threshold of what the wire is capable of holding. Because I don't know if uh, they're going to want to do that themselves or what, because I mean, it, uh, they've got like a little maintenance person or something obviously so they may want to do that and I haven't talked to them yet so basically there's R, W and whatever so I need to get I don't know why people would use these little gray ones these things are so small they don't really do much let's go ahead and hook that up to R here let's see if we can trip a trip a breaker voltage breaker. I tell you what, we're just going to put the jumper to it because it's too much effort to get that over there. So there's that. Oh. Yep. So like I said, I've got the fan turned on so that made it do its thing. I'm going to go up there and put it on heat only and double check the wires to see if uh, they need common hooked up because if there's a short one of the other wires at least then that would just cause it to cause one of those other circuits to run and not blow the fuse completely taking their heat out that's my kind of work logic but uh, there's the heat it's at 30 amps so they have heat now whether they want the heat pump to run too or if it you know they're even using it i'm not sure i'll have to talk to them about that now wait a minute here that's pulling 30 amps still so really that other terminal wire there must be jumped somewhere internally in there because it didn't even make a difference. Yeah. Well, I guess that is just a single stage. That's a single stage uh, sequencer, so that's probably why. I wonder if that's original or not. All right, so I went out there and looked at the heat pump. Say it was so screwed up, it's not even funny. The thermostat was wired wrong. They have it hooked to B, not O. The outside unit says O, so I assume that it's supposed to go to O. Um, they had common rain upstairs, don't need. It's a generic wannabe Honeywell thermostat. They had Y jumped over to W1, so I can see you might have wanted to run auxiliary heat with the heat pump, but generally you do that with an isolation relay. So how this thing ever worked in cooling mode is beyond me because it would have been making the electric strips run when they were doing the Y terminal. So I corrected all that garbage, ended up correcting the common wire, which I think might be where my short was. So I'm gonna correct that here real quick and see what we get. If we have any more issues with tripping of the breakers and stuff like that, or the fuses, I should say. Now we got a little wire to work with here. Funny thing is, that's not even a heat pump thermostat, really. They don't have a W1, W2 uh, hooked up on that thing, so. Now, trying to be a better person, we can put down that stat wire there you go so we're still pulling too many amps I believe so let's go back and look at that again yep she's pulling 31 the outside unit I don't know if it's even trying to run I honestly if they're not using it I'm gonna unhook it and run it straight as air conditioning. I need to talk to the office and find out. All right, so this is the outdoor unit that was all jacked to the whole new level. Clean this up. All right, so coming down here, checking to see if my wiring is any good out here. I do have 27 volts on R to O to common. From common to Y, I have nothing. So it's obviously not a heat pump thermostat. Coming to the O terminal, I have nothing. Uh, nothing really there. My question is, uh, are they really using this thing as a heat pump? I don't think they are. So, 
It says heat on. Like I said, it's just a regular Honeywell. It just has heat cooling off. No auxiliary. B and O. So for giggles, let's go ahead and put it on cooling. Make sure cooling runs. I don't even know if it will even run because it's 59 degrees in here. Of course, this thermostat goes down to 50 degrees because you should be able to run your air conditioner that cold. That's normal. Oh, just heard something kick on. Sound like the air conditioner. It's running. It's always a good sign. Feels like some warmth for as cold as it is out here. Suction line is cold. I would say she's running in cooling mode. So it's never going to run the auxiliary heat or any of that stuff like they had originally, but they got the wrong thermostat for that. It's hooked up, but they decided to change it. So we're going to leave this thing go and uh, go ahead and get the breaker for it. And then uh, they should be good to go. We're not blowing fuses now, so should be good. All right, so going in here, looking at the furnace for the heat. It's on a 30 amp breaker. Outdoor unit is on a 20 because it's like 12 gauge ran to it. The heat is undersized. It really needs changed. Wouldn't be hard to do. So we're gonna go ahead and mark it up that it needs to be corrected. We've got it temporarily wired up. That has to have a new wire pulled right on the front of the unit. It says it needs a minimum of 40 amp circuit. So they need to pull probably an eight gauge and uh, put the right thing in there. That was manufactured in 2004, so I'm gonna assume it's been in for a long time. We'll let them know. I'm sure they may not appreciate that, but it needs to be done correctly. So that wraps this one up, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smack the thumbs button. We will catch you on the next one.